Hello everybody, Ducey here again, looking at a few more updates for Encounter Plus. We are looking at updates 4.12.1 and also 4.13.0. So first into 4.12.1. There is now the ability to host the web client directly from the app. Now here's what that means. Before, when you were hosting the web client, you'd host some of the data from the app and the client itself relied on an internet connection out to the developer's servers in order for the web client to completely work. It was kind of half and half. The data would push it to the website, and then you'd have to connect to that website. But if you're uh, out in the middle of nowhere in a cabin in the woods playing D&D and you want to just do everything locally, but you still want people to be able to connect, you couldn't do it without an internet connection, even though it was hosted from the iPad. Well, now it's 100% hosted from the iPad, so you could do it whether or not you have an internet connection. There's a few other technical benefits that come with it, but this is going to be the main method moving forwards of hosting the web client. So here it says my web server's turned on. We've got another video where we talk through all of that. I'll put up a link up here that you can go click to learn more about how to do that, but now it says web client none, meaning it's using the one online, but if you click in here, you can install the latest version of the web client, and we're off to the races. And once you do that, you really shouldn't have to mess with it anymore. So now you can host that yourself. And that is that. Now you can play whether or not you have internet with people still connecting as long as they're on the same Wi-Fi as you. Now the next enhancement is pretty cool for people who run a hybrid game like me. So I have people at the table and I have people who connect online all at the same time. And at the table, I've got a TV built into the table where people are putting minis down and whatnot. So let me turn that on. So I'm gonna hit open window here. It's a little bit different on a Mac, on a, on a uh, iPad or iPhone. It would have you do screen sharing or connect through HDMI cable. We'll make this a little smaller here. And you can see that as I move this around, what the TV would be showing here. Now there is a viewport that they added a little bit, a little while ago here zoom out so you can see from the dm mode exactly what's being shown on the tv so if the tv's behind you or whatever it doesn't matter you can kind of tell as you're moving around what's showing and what's not on the tv but what if you also have somebody connected through the web client or multiple people connected through the web client now you can see that i actually have two different viewports that are showing so if the web client is looking like this you can see what's showing there on the web client. Now there is this TV mode on the web client that I had this set in. So you can use the web client to be locked down onto a TV and controlled by the DM as well. When I'm not in TV mode, you'll see as I move it around, it doesn't actually change the web client. This way, somebody who's playing at a computer can control it. But if you go into TV mode, then it goes back to me being able to control what is being seen there. So if you want to have those all synced up, you can. And now you can see exactly what is showing in each one as you go. Super cool. Now the next thing that's super handy here is if I'm looking at this map, I love this map, but I've got a little bit of a low resolution copy of it. Now let's say this was the GM map that I put in here and I added all of my little tokens and icons to the, to the DM version of the map. Well, sometimes those DM versions are low resolution, and then you want to swap them out with the high resolution player map. Now, if I do that, it now will keep everything aligned exactly where it belongs. So we'll go to the gear. We're going to pick a new image, new image. There's my high res player map. And you'll see all of the pins and everything have been scaled, all my tokens are in the right spot. It now realizes that I'm just trying to put in a higher resolution map in here. And you can tell that I've got that slightly better version in there now, but I didn't lose any of my work getting anything arranged. Awesome. And the last thing we're going to look at here is that both for shortcuts up here across the top and for markers, you can now link to external URLs. So let's say I put a new marker here. You can press and hold on iOS to get that menu to come up. 
and I go to reference, normally I would go here and pick something that I want to link to that's in Encounter Plus. But if I swipe to the left, and on my mouse I'm just doing a one finger swipe, or of course on iOS you just swipe to the left and hit edit, I can type in whatever I want here. So let's say I ran across this website that has some really cool tables on it for random uh, dungeon rune encounters. I can put that in there. And now when I hit that marker, it will take me to that website right here inside of Encounter Plus. Pretty cool. And there's the table that I wanted to look at. Awesome. You could use this to link to players in D&D Beyond. Anything you can imagine that would be useful to quickly get to. I saw in the Discord that you can even link to the web client that you're currently running. I guess that could be handy for just testing what it looks like, but yeah. So that is version 4.12.1. Let's move on to 4.13.0. The first cool thing here is that I've got a uh, controller connected to my Mac now, an SN30 Pro. I love these. They remind me of playing SNES back in the day, except they have all the new cool stuff that a controller should have. I can use the D-pad to go up, down, left, and right to control the party here. And I can use the left analog to move them around this way as well. And if I pull up the TV screen here, let's get some room so we can see what's going on. Okay, I can use the right analog stick to move the map here, which is super cool. So if we're sitting, playing at a TV. You can hand this to somebody to move somebody around. Oop, my controller is even rumbling when I'm trying to go somewhere I'm not allowed to go. Very cool. That is super handy. Hey, this is Future Deucey coming back at you. I just wanted to mention a couple more controls with the gamepad. I already mentioned that you can use the left arrow and the D-pad to move them around and that the right joystick will change the viewport here. But something that can be handy is that in combat, as I move a single one around, if it's their turn, and if I hit Y or triangle, it will recenter the viewport. If I hit X, it will reset their movement that it's tracking there. And if I hit A, it will open or close the nearest door. So very cool. Yep, can't go through that. It's rumbling at me. Hit A, now I can go through it and it stops rumbling at me. Awesome. And of course, R and L will zoom out. Awesome. I am definitely gonna mess with this to let one of my players quickly move around the party while we're at the table without having to pull up their device. And something else that's cool here is you should even be able to control your character through the browser. I know Safari supports it. Some browsers do. Some browsers don't. Even through the browser, you should be able to use your gamepad to control this. How cool. Okay, I just popped up a, a screen share of my iPad here just to show you what this kind of looks like um, when you control your token on... Uh, through the browser and this should be able to uh, work on some browsers it can be a little finicky getting set up but um, yeah it's pretty cool I can control here and if I use the L and R buttons it zooms in and out to zoom in and out there so this can be a super handy way to have players control tokens whether it's on a TV or otherwise awesome and you should also be able to just use your keyboard to control this the same way as a gamepad as well. So if you don't have a fancy gamepad hooked up to your device, you can still use the keyboard to bounce around. Okay, so the next thing here is that under settings, we can change the uh, random dice generator. And I have no idea what any of these other versions mean but there's a few different randomizers there that you can choose from if you understand those and are you know into programming you can have your choice of randomness there the next change here when you are using the external screen you can choose well here let's open it up great so this is what would be seen on like a tv while we're running you can now choose whether or not you're showing the initiative track. So if I start this up, 
we've got the initiative over here. Well, you could choose that before, but now you can choose if it shows the labels for any of these. So here, initiative labels all, but we could say none, or we could say players only, so they don't accidentally get any hints about what kind of monsters these are. I stick with the normal labels, which is just the first letter there, and then a number. Usually that's not enough for the players to guess what the monsters are. But if you ever rename what the labels are, and again, that's done in here, this label G7, if you've ever renamed those for various reasons on maps, it can be handy to, if you want full names to show up so you remember them when you see them here. Uh, but now you can choose to hide or not hide those labels. Awesome. Another cool change here, if you press and hold or right click on the map to bring up the context menu, there are now quick shortcuts for camera move and point. So if I point, it will do the point and move there. And if I move, it'll just do the move without the beacon pointing off. And it will stay moved at that spot if you do a camera move. Cool. Last but not least, a few more keyboard shortcuts. If you've got a token selected and you do Command E, it will bring you straight up to editing that. I'm gonna jump out of combat here for a second. If you do Command D, it will duplicate that token. Very handy. If you do Command Delete or Backspace, it'll get rid of it. Command B for battle will toggle combat or not, whether they're showing up here in the initiative list. Toggle L, Command L will turn their light on or off if they've got a light here. So right click, here's enable light. And if I do Command L, you can see that it has been enabled now without me having to do that. So Command L to turn lights on and off. Command U to hide and unhide. Of course, the arrow keys will move your tokens around. The shift and arrow keys will rotate your token around that you have selected. Pressing enter will bring up your damage here and enter again will apply it. And the space bar will show the reference. Very cool. Escape will close a floating window that you've got open. If I'm in combat here and I hit the command right arrow, it'll go to next turn, next turn, next turn or back. And command enter will start and stop combat. Awesome. I am going to use all of those now. Well, thank you everybody for hanging out a few more minutes with me today. I hope these tutorials are helpful. If you've got questions, leave a comment below. Check out my playlist that's probably showing on the screen right now or in just a moment. And as always, come check out the Discord. If you have you know specific questions or need some help or you just, there's tons of cool content there. People are posting maps for Encounter Plus all the time. It's a real great community. You should come check it out. And a huge shout out to Jiraj, who is the developer of Encounter Plus for constantly just nailing these updates. There's been so many updates that I haven't even been able to keep up with them. And also for RR George, who has been helping with the web client, implemented some of this gamepad stuff, showed me how it works, super cool. Well, that's it for now. Have fun slaying those dragons. Normally, I would go here and pick something that I want to link to that's in Encounter Plus. But if I swipe, hit, hit,